A very good morning to all my dear children. Hope you all are doing well. See, uh, as I always say that physics and nature are connected. Physics and nature go parallel. And physics is all about revealing the laws of nature from the events that we observe around us. So today we'll start the chapter gravitation. And here also we'll see that how we can link the events that are happening around us with the law of gravitation. Okay. See, you all have read about gravitation and gravity in your previous classes. So you've read about Newton's story as well, that uh, Newton was sitting, oh, that's an awe moment. <laughs> you have read that uh, Newton was sitting under a tree, he was reading a book and suddenly an apple fell down on his head and in a flash, he understood that this is the very same force that uh, earth is exerting on moon and moon revolves around the earth and it falls on earth at its every point. So this is the same force with which this apple is falling down on the surface of earth, right? So as we know that forces are, when, when one object exert force on another object, then second object exert equal and opposite force on the first object. So these are action and reaction forces. And we have read about Newton's third law of motion in the previous chapter that to every action, there is always equal and opposite reaction. So if there are two objects, one is exerting force on the other, then the other will exert the same force on the first object, right? So let's consider two objects of masses M1 and M2, they are distant R apart. So if M1 is exerting force on M2, then M2 will exert same force on M1. So this is Newton's third law of motion. So if, because apple is falling, falling down because earth is exerting force on the apple, right? So apple will also exert the same force on the earth. And we can consider another example here. Earth is revolving around the sun. We know that moon revolves around the earth and earth revolves around the sun. So they are exerting force on each other. The force with which sun is attracting the earth towards it is the same force with which earth will attract the sun towards it. Then why is only earth revolving around the sun? Why not sun revolving around the earth? They can revolve around each other like binary stars. It is, but it is not happening here. It is only the earth which is revolving around the sun. And we can see that it is only the apple which is falling down towards the surface of earth, not the earth moving towards the apple. So why is this so? What is the reason behind it? See, when we talk about force, we consider mass of the object, we consider acceleration of the object. We know that F is equal to MA that we had read in the previous chapter. So mass and acceleration, they are related with force, right? So because here we are talking about earth apple system and we know that the force on apple due to earth is same as the force on the earth due to an apple, right? So these two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And this is the reason we are considering a negative sign here, though they are equal, but they are opposite in uh, direction, right? So, and second thing is that we know that F is equal to MA. Now, a force depends upon two different factors, one mass and second is acceleration. In the earth apple system, we know that earth is very massive. Then we can neglect mass of the apple, where an apple which is very small in size. In one kg apple, we almost get uh, three or four apples, right? And mass of the earth is of the order of six into 10 raised to the power 24 kgs, right? So mass of the apple can be neglected. And this is the reason there would be more acceleration in the apple, not in the earth. So acceleration of the earth is almost negligible because mass of the apple is negligible. And this is the reason we see only apple moving towards the earth. Therefore, apple moves towards the earth and falls off and earth does not move towards the apple. Same concept can be applied in the earth-sun system. See, in the earth-sun system, mass of the earth is of the order of 10 raised to the power 24 kgs. It is 6 into 10 is power 24 kgs. And mass of the sun is uh, 2 in 1.9, uh, uh, you can take it as 2, 2 into 10 to the power 30 kgs. So earth is lighter as compared to sun. Mass of the earth is less, right? And this is the reason we can see more acceleration in the earth. And this is the reason that earth revolves around the sun, right? So uh, 
Newton on this basis proposed his law of gravitation, which is also called as universal law of gravitation. Now, there is one question that why Newton's law of gravitation is called universal law of gravitation? See, the answer is this law is applicable everywhere. It is universally accepted. We can apply universal law of gravitation in the heavenly bodies, in the earth sun system, in the earth moon system. And we can also apply this universal law of gravitation in the apple earth system. We can also apply this universal law of gravitation between two objects which are just lying on the surface of earth. And this is the reason this law is called universal law of gravitation. And it states that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force there is an attractive force between two objects. Now we know that gravitational forces are attractive in nature. So every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force, which is directly proportional to product of their masses. Means this force is directly proportional to product of the masses. Force and masses are directly related. When we increase the mass, force will also increase. And inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. So this force is inversely related to distance. If we increase the distance between the objects, then force will decrease, right? And when we decrease the distance between the objects, then the objects will attract each other strongly, right? So uh, let's consider this statement in parts. See, first part says that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force. Means if we have two objects of masses M1 and M2, then there will be an attractive force between the objects. This force is attractive. This is the nature of the force. And this force is the gravitational force that is acting between the objects, right? So this force is gravitational force and it is attractive in nature. Second part of the statement says, that this force is directly proportional to product of their masses. Means when we increase the mass of the object, the force will also increase. Third part of the statement says that this force is inversely proportional to square of the distance between the objects. Means if we increase the distance, force will decrease, right? Now, see, now we can collectively uh, write these two relations as, because F is directly proportional to M1 and M2 is the one, first relation. Second relation is F is inversely proportional to square of the distance. Now we can combine these two relations and we'll get this. F is directly proportional to M1, M2 by R square, right? See, whenever there is a sign of proportionality, we always add a constant of proportionality, right? So here the constant is denoted by, you can see it is capital G capital G is there, it is called universal gravitational constant. This capital G is called universal gravitational constant. Again, the name is universal gravitational constant. Now, again, why the name word universal here? See, G does not change with place, whether you are on the surface of earth, whether you're on the surface of moon, whether you go to the sun, it will remain the same. Value of G will not change. And this is this value of universal gravitational constant is universally accepted. It is applicable universally. And therefore, it is called universal gravitational constant. And its value is 6.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 Newton meters square per kg square. See, we can easily derive the unit of gravitational constant using the above formula. We know that unit of force is Newton, unit of mass is kilogram, unit of distance is meter. We have M1, M2, so it is kilogram square. Kilogram into kilogram is kilogram square. We have R square, so it is meter square. So when you take all these quantities there, G will become F R square upon M1 into M2. Yeah. So by putting all the units in the formula, we'll get the unit of gravitational constant as Newton meter square per kg square. Now you can also see that uh, 
वैल्यू ऑफ ग्रेविटेशनल कॉन्स्टेंट इज सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन इंटू टेन पावर माइनस इलेवन न्यूटन मीटर स्क्र पर किलोग्राम स्क्र राइट सो द वैल्यू ऑफ ग्रेविटेशनल कॉन्स्टेंट इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ टेन रेज टू द पावर माइनस इलेवन यू कैन सी दिस वैल्यू इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल राइट सो ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्सेज आर वीक फोर्सेज एंड दिस इज द रीजन ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्सेज आर ओनली ऑब्जर्व इन द केसेज ऑफ हेवनली ऑब्जेक्ट विच है विच आर क्वाइट ह्यूज विच हैव heavy mass which are heavy ma massive objects for example earth sun system we can see the earth moving around the sun the gravitational force can be easily observed can be easily seen there we can see moon revolving around the earth we can see apple falling on the earth any object falls freely towards the earth because gravity gravitational forces can be observed only in those cases cases but for the objects which are lying on the surface of the earth which have negligible mass comparatively negligible mass gravitational forces cannot be felt because these forces are weak forces and we, we can prove it by taking three different conditions see uh, here we have taken three different systems first system is a earth sun system fine second system that we are taking here is of an object which is lying on the surface of the earth and in the third system we are taking two different objects which are lying on the earth surface so in all the three different cases we are going to find the gravitational force and we'll prove that you can see you'll see the difference that why gravitational forces are negligible they cannot be felt in case of the objects which are very small in size so in the first case as we are taking earth sun system we know that mass of the earth is 6 into 10 raised to the power 24 kg on the other hand mass of sun is 2 into 10 raised to the power 30 kg and distance between earth and sun is one astronomical unit which is equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to the power 11 meters see when we calculate distance we always calculate distance from center of object 1 to center of object 2 so gravitational forces are central forces we always calculate distance from the centers all right as we know that f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square by substituting all the values of universal gravitational constant of mass of of sun mass of earth and distance between them we get the value approximately equal to 8.9 into 10 raised to the power 21 newtons this is the value that we'll get now let's consider the second case of an object which is lying on the surface of earth Now, for an object lying on the surface of Earth, let's take mass of the object be one kilogram. We can consider any uh, object of any mass. Okay, and mass of the Earth we know it is constant. It is six into ten power twenty four kgs. And uh, because here we have to find the distance between center of the Earth to the center of the object. And because object is very small in size, so its radius can be neglected. and we can consider we can take the distance between these two between the earth and the object as only radius of the earth fine so this portion this portion this small portion can be neglected and radius of the earth is 6400 km and when we write radius in meters it would be 6.4 into 10 to the power 6 meters on putting all these values in the formula we'll get the gravitational force as 9.8 newtons right so you can see the you can you can compare these two cases when we are taking two heavenly object gravitational force is quite strong it is of the order of 10 to the power 21 newtons but when we are taking the object which is lying on the surface of earth it's small it's comparatively it is very small actually it is 9. Point, just 9.8 newtons now for any two objects which are lying on the surface of the earth in this case we are taking two we can take two small balls or anything so here we are taking mass of object 1 let mass of object 1 be 1 kg let mass of let consider let uh, consider these two objects of equal masses and they are distant 1 meter apart now on putting all these values we'll get the force as 6.67 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 newtons you can see here we have the gravitational force of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 newtons which cannot be how can it be felt it's very very small value and this is the reason for two objects which are lying on the surface of earth 
they do not move towards each other because of gravitational force of attraction we can only see earth revolving around the sun we can only see moon revolving around the earth we can only see objects falling freely towards the earth because their force is quite you know quite strong and but in case of two objects which are just lying on the surface of earth or moving on the earth which are very small of small masses this force of attraction can be neglected because it is very small so gravitational forces are weak forces now from here we can conclude that gravitational forces first we uh, had read that gravitational forces are attractive in nature two objects will always attract each other this is the first point that we had studied second we uh, got to know that gravitational forces are central forces we always calculate distance from center of object 1 to center of object 2 and third point is gravitational forces are weak forces so these are weak forces attractive central and weak forces okay i hope this part is clear now let's move to another slide see here we have a numerical problem what happens to the force between two objects if mass of one of the objects is doubled agar hum ek object ke mass ko double kar dete hain to gravitational force kaise change hoga right so we know that gravitational force is f it is denoted by f and it is equal to capital g universal gravitational constant mass of object 1 mass of object 2 divided by r square this is the formula for gravitational force now in this question if we double if mass of one or no, one of the objects is doubled then what happens to the gravitational force so as we know that gravitational force is directly proportional to product of masses right so if mass is increased then gravitational force will also increase so let's double uh, the mass of one of the objects let's take m1 okay so uh, if m1 becomes 2m1 then how does it affect gravitational force between the two objects so now we'll put the value of uh, m1 as 2m1 okay now the new gravitational force would be let uh, let it be f dash so f dash is equal to g in the bracket now we'll write 2m1 in place of m1 now i'm going to write 2m1 into m2 divided by r square fine ab is two ko hum aage le jate hain so now we'll get 2g m1 m2 by r square now this 2g m1 m2 by r square is nothing but f so in place of 2g m1 m2 g m1 m2 by r square we can write f so it is 2f if mass of one of the objects is doubled then force will also increase theek hai force bhi hamara double ho jayega agar hum mass ko double kar dete hain to so this is uh, one question now in the second question we have how does the force of gravitation between two objects change when the distance between them is reduced to half so if the distance between the two objects is reduced to half how will it affect the gravitational force of earth see here we are decreasing the distance between the two objects theek okay. hai so when we decrease the distance between the two objects force of attraction increases because force of attraction and distance they are inversely related right now as we know that f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square ठीक है नाउ इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव व्हेन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन देम इज रिड्यूस्ड टू हाफ सो इफ द डिस्टेंस बिकम्स इफ आर बिकम्स आर अपॉन 2 देन हाउ डस इट इफेक्ट द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स बिटवीन द टू ऑब्जेक्ट्स राइट सो फोर्स ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन नाउ न्यू फोर्स विल बी f डैश इट इज इक्वल टू g m1 m2 डिवाइडेड बाय r अपॉन 2 whole square initially we had r square now r will become r by 2 so r square will become r upon 2 ka square now what do we get g m1 m2 divided by r square by 4 theek hai ab ye 4 upar chala jayega and uh, now we have 
g m1 m2 by r square and this g m1 m2 by r square is nothing but f so in place of this we can write f so force will become four times when we decrease the distance when we reduce the distance to half force of attraction between the objects becomes four times fine okay so this is a second numerical problem of this chapter now i'm going to share a few questions with you guys you can do these questions at home try these questions in case you find any problem you can ask me in the comment section see you in the next session bye bye